Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be summing an infinite series with reciprocals of integers that are three apart. What I mean by that is four, seven, ten are numbers that leave a remainder of one when divided by three, right? Or in other words, there are one more than a multiple of three. So we have one minus one fourth plus one over seven minus one over ten plus blah, blah, so on and so forth where we have an infinite sum of these numbers. So how do we evaluate the sum? Is this a finite sum? In other words, does this converge? Uh, it does, let me just tell you that, and I'll explain why in a little bit. But how do you evaluate something like this? You've probably seen similar sums like this, especially the sum with reciprocals of odd numbers, which is very, very famous, such as one minus one third, plus one fifth, minus one seventh, so on and so forth. If you are not familiar with this, go ahead and check out my video that I made on this sum. So let's go ahead and focus on this. Now, how do we evaluate a sum like this? Obviously, if you're dealing with reciprocals of integers and everything is positive, then that sum doesn't converge. What about the alternating sum? Does that converge? That's a good question. So. To be able to find this sum, we're going to take advantage of a really, really nice branch of mathematics, which is called calculus. If you're not familiar with calculus, don't be scared by the word, because actually, if you know some basic rules, you can at least understand to some extent. Okay, but we're going to talk, some, talk about some advanced topics here. Anyways, let's get started. To be able to evaluate a sum like this, I need to use the sum of a geometric series, but we're going to do it backwards. In other words, whenever I consider 1 over 1 plus x cubed, this comes from a sum like this. 1 minus x cubed plus x to the 6 minus x to the 9th plus x to the 12, so on and so forth. This goes on forever, and this sum is convergent if x is between negative 1 and 1. So I, I need to pay attention to the fact that x is between those values. Now, what happens if x is not one of those values? That's a good question. So, anyways, how what does this have to do with our sum though, right? So here's the hocus pocus strategy we're going to use. We're gonna go ahead and integrate both sides. So what happens if I integrate this with respect to x? Of course, it becomes the integral of this with respect to x, because they're equal, right? So the question is then, on the right-hand side, we have an infinite polynomial or a power series. So integrating would be fairly easy, because we can integrate term by term. What's the integral of 1? x. How do you integrate x to the third power? Use the power rule. Add the power, or increase by 1, and divide by the power. Make sense? But of course, it's alternating, so you got to be careful. And this gives us an infinite sum again, of course, right? Of course, there's a sum, uh, there's a constant at the end, which is c. But guess what? c happens to be 0. Why? Something to think about. But on the left-hand side, we kind of have like an interesting integral, which I can also write like this. So a lot of times, if it's 1 over something, then we can write it as dx over something, okay? Okay, great. So right-hand side is pretty good. And notice, if I replace x with 1, then I get 1. If x is 1, then I get 1 minus 1 fourth plus, oh, by the way, I forgot to include negative 1 and 1, right? Does this converge if x is 1 or negative 1? That's actually a good question, right? Anyways, let's get back to this. So we're replacing x with 1, and this gives us 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 seventh minus one tenth plus dot dot dot. This is the sum I'm looking for. But I don't have an answer for that because I haven't integrated the left-hand side yet. So the challenge is integrating this one. I'll show you kind of quickly how you can do it. I'm not necessarily gonna go through all the steps because it's probably gonna be time consuming and somewhat boring, I think, because you can do the rest, right? Hopefully. So how do you integrate 1 over 1 plus x cubed? So let's go ahead and write it as 1 over x cubed plus 1, and then factor it using sum of two cubes. You know the formula? 
x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. There's a formula for a cubed plus b cubed, which is called sum of two cubes. And you need to know that. Okay, now, we are going to split it up because we can't directly integrate this. It's really, like, impossible to find a function whose derivative is 1 over x cubed plus 1 unless you split this up. And that's called partial fractions. And Wolfram Alpha does that if you ask it. So, basically, this can be split up into two fractions, some of which is this one. That's what partial fractions are. So we're going to break down this into the sum of two fractions, but we have to be careful because whenever you have a quadratic in the denominator, the numerator needs to be one degree less than that. So I do need a linear expression for the numerator. Instead of b, I just write bx plus c. Does that make sense? I hope it does. There are certain rules. Go ahead and check how partial fractions are done, and maybe we can do a video one day on these technicals. Now, this is the equality we have, and we're going to make a common denominator on the right-hand side, and that gives us a times x squared minus x plus 1 plus bx plus c multiplied by x plus 1 equals 1. Obviously, there is no x on the right-hand side, so everything on the left needs to be 0, all the coefficients except for the constant term. So how do we evaluate this? You can go ahead and start distributing. Like You're going to be getting something like ax squared and then a bx squared, which can be written as a plus b times bx squared. Now, since there is no x squared on the right-hand side, the coefficient of x squared needs to be 0, which tells you a plus b is 0. And then you're going to find some other equations. You solve it as a system, but I did it for you, or Wolfram Alpha did it for me, and I'm just going to show you that this expression, which... I use to break down into partial fractions is going to be as follows. First of all, they're going to have a one-third in common, so I'll pull it out because integrating would be a little easier this way. And then to this, I need to add negative x plus 2 divided by x squared minus x plus 1. In other words, a is one-third and b, oops, I forgot to write this as bx plus c, and then b is negative one-third, and c is two-thirds. And then you can just take out the one-third, and it'll be better. Okay, so far so good. So what I need to do now is integrate this, and that should give me the answer. But when I integrate, like how do you integrate this, right? We need to kind of think about, okay, I need to integrate one-third times one over x plus one dx, and then plus negative x plus two, divide by x squared minus x plus 1 dx. Okay, here's a couple of things you can do. First of all, I can kind of split it up into two expressions. One thing that you need to do here is, first of all, if you think about the denominator, it's a derivative, let's call that u. If u is x squared minus x plus 1, then du would be 2x minus 1 dx. So you kind of have that, but not necessarily the same way. It's kind of like 2x, but we have negative x. We can turn it into uh, 2x by multiplying by and dividing by something, and that's going to give us a natural log. But you're going to have a leftover, and that leftover is going to give you some constant divided by, let's just call that constant, I don't know, d over x squared minus x plus 1, and this number here, the denominator can be written as x minus 1 half squared plus 3 fourths. And guess what? That's going to give you the arctangent because it's in that form. Anyways, to keep a long story short, the integral from here is going to give you the following. One third on the outside. Inside, we're going to have ln x plus 1 from the 1 over x plus 1 plus square root of 3 arctangent. 2x minus 1 divided by root 3. You see, that's a lot of work. I told you. Minus 1 half ln x squared minus x plus 1. And if you differentiate this expression, you should be getting what? The ex original expression. If x is equal to 1, then we get 1 third multiplied by ln 2 plus root 3 times arctangent 1 over root 3. Now, arctangent 1 over root 3 gives you pi over 6 degrees. And you can do a little bit more work to simplify. What about the ln? ln 1 is 0, so I don't even have to worry about it. Right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye. And check out the partial sum formula. Isn't that nice?